Mitchell, and this week we are talking about reloading. Uh, now, reloading is a multi-step process. It's not something that you just sit down and start cranking out ammo. But what I'm going to do this week is show you guys a basic process of how to do it. And first, what we're going to do is we're going to start with case preparation. Okay, so consider this part one of a multi-part series. Uh, this is case preparation. As you can see, I've got some bags of 308 casings here, and I've gone and broken them out into what they are. I save my ammo, and so since this is a show about reloading, uh, primarily this video, we're going to basically be talking about once fired ammo. So this is ammo that's already been fired uh, a single time. You can see what I've done here is I've grouped uh, my ammo uh, by how many times it's been fired. Okay, that's pretty important is to keep those groups the same. Uh, so this is twice fired ammo, this is once fired, and this is also once fired, and they're different uh, brands. So I'm going to take you through how we prep these cases. Okay, the first thing we want to deal with when we're processing brass, and you're probably wondering, hey, why are we processing brass? Is that part of reloading? Well, absolutely. If you're looking at this case right here, this is a fired case. Okay, that means it's been fired through a weapon, and it still has a, a spent primer right in there. We need to remove that primer, and we need to size this case down so it will take a bullet again. And that's accomplished right here with our reloading press. And the die that I have in here, which is this part right here, is basically a um, neck sizing die. And don't worry about what the terminology is. Suffice to say, what we're trying to do here is take this case because we're going to keep moving with this case. We're going to keep reloading and putting bullets in here until it basically doesn't take bullets anymore and we throw it away. This is a multiple use case. But we have a bit of a problem, and I'll show you what that is. All right? So if I take my Sierra bullets right here, and these are the ones I want to reload with. This is way down the line, but I just want to show you something. If I take my bullet, this is the projectile that fires out of the weapon, and I put it in the spent case. You'll see that this neck, this neck tension is not enough for it, for it to hold anymore. I need to put this through my press and have this squeeze down so that it holds it. Now, let me find a better example than this. You can see these are bent, but this bullet just slides in and out of here. You see that? It just slides in and out. Now, that would not be good in your weapon, so that's why you need to use a press to both take the primer out and resize the neck, okay? So all I do, and get this out of the way of the confusion, show you this a little bit better. Basically, all I do is take my reloading press and put my bullet in here. Okay. Now what I have is the primers out and my neck is sized. Okay. So I'm going to do that for the rest of these cases. Here I'm on a roll. I'm going to show you how easy this is. All right. That's it. is called case trimming. Now what you have here is an electric cordless drill uh, and a chuck and then a case. Now on this old handle I've embedded a uh, case trimming tool. Okay, so there's little blades on the inside here and this gauge measures them. Now here's why we need to do this. When you shoot the ammo it tends to want to grow slightly, the brass stretches, and we need to make sure that the brass is still within specification because if it gets too long, it's going to create an unsafe condition. So we use real handy gauges like this Lee, um, don't worry about the handles, just something I cobbled together, but it, it's basically a Lee case trimmer gauge, and it's real simple. All I do is put the gauge in here, run my drill, okay, and then run it till it stops. So it automatically has got a depth gauge which measures how deep this thing ought to be. Then I take my case out and I'm good to go. It just got the slightest trim. You can barely see that. Now, if this was a more aggressive trim, I would use a case deburring tool as well, which is just it's real simple. All it does is go in here, 
you can actually chuck this up and just polish the outside of the case so you don't have any rough edges. So I will go through and trim all these cases right here and then we'll hit the next step. Okay, the last stage here is I've got a bunch of cases that have just been trimmed and they're all nice and ready to go. The last stage is to basically clean these. And to do that, we're going to use a vibrating case tumbler like the one you see right here. Now, some of these are pretty clean, honestly. Uh, my rifle is a bolt gun that I'm shooting this out of, so it, uh, it shoots fairly clean. It's not a gas gun like an AR. So I probably don't need to do this, but I'm so used to following these steps that I just do them out of habit, and then I get really clean and ultra shiny cases. So even though these look okay, I'm still gonna clean them. It's no work on my part. The case tumbler does it all. Basically, all you do right here is get some cleaning media, this is the kind I use as a Frankfurt Arsenal uh, brass cleaning media. And what it is, is actually um, crushed corn cobs. All right, so what you do is you take some of this stuff right here, you pour it inside your case tumbler. All right. That's about good right there. About half full, okay. Set that aside. Then what you do is you take a squirt of this stuff and it's brass polish, okay? And now this is designed for use with cases, so it doesn't contain any uh, ammonia or anything like that in it, like brasso or anything like wood. So basically all you do is you stick a squirt of this in there. Okay. Give it a good shake. This stuff should last a long, long time. Okay, then now my case tumbler can handle a lot more brass than this, but this is how much I'm going to put in right now. Now. I don't need to cover it or go through any special steps. This thing is going to vibrate and clean this stuff, and it'll kind of more or less take care of itself. So I'm going to set this lid on. Okay. And then all I'm going to do is plug this in and let this sit for about an hour. This is how, how long I tend to use my cases for. Inside here, I will let this thing run for an hour. I'll be back to show you what they look like. Well, here we are. My little machine busted away. Let's stop it and find out how we did it. It's been in there for a little over an hour. All right. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Some nice, beautifully polished cases all ready to go and ready to reload. So now what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to take, make sure all the cleaning media is out of there and I'm going to start set to reloading them. So in the next part of our series, I'm going to show you how to recharge these with a new primer, how to put a powder in here and how to seat some brass. So I'm Frank Mitchell and I will catch you next time.
with the uh, cleaning. I'm going to have some cases here that are basically ready to go, but I just want to make sure that there's no cleaning media stuck in the primer pocket. So what I'm going to use is what's called primer uh, pocket uniformer. It's a pretty dumb tool. Uh, this side does small primers, this side does large primers, and all you need to do is rub it in there just like that, and all it does is take away any debris. And what I want to do is I want to look through each case and just make sure that there's nothing as far as debris inside there that you could see the hole. Uh, from the primer shine out the other side, and I'll see if I can let you guys see that. Uh, yeah, there it is. You see the hole. That's basically what you're looking for. This case is ready to go. So it's pretty simple. I'm just going to continue to do that. Make sure there's no media in there. See the hole. Good to go. I'm just going to continue to do that with each case so that I know that I'm ready to reload. Okay, so once my cases are cleaned out and I've got clean primer pockets, the next step is to actually prime the cases. And that's accomplished with a tool like this. This is a Lee hand primer, and this is my favorite priming tool. There are many others you can prime with the press, but I personally like this. And inside, you'll see primers in there. Uh, these are federal gold metal match primers because I tend to shoot relatively precise ammo, so that's what's in here. Now, this is the one state where I always wear safety glasses. You see, I've got one right now because uh, primers are high explosive, and you definitely don't want to have one of these things go off by accident. It's not going to blow the side off the house or anything like that, but it will ruin your day if one of these goes off in your eye. So keep eye uh, protection on at all times. Essentially, all you do is you load the individual shell into the primer pocket like this. Press it once to load one. And then give it a push. Okay. Push it by hand. And bang. That's a CD primer right there. See, see how fast that was? And all I do is I check my finger to make sure it's seated correctly. This thing is usually pretty accurate. And I stick it on my shelf holder. So I go on just like that. It's warm. This is something that's usually accomplished uh, by the people who, uh, you know, watch TV and stuff while they're doing this. That's perfectly acceptable. This is kind of one of those things that you've got to be ultra precise in. The machine tends to take care of itself. Just remember, you are dealing with live primers, so you'll be aware of that. You can see how fast this goes. Just prime shells with abandon. The reason why I like this is it allows me to feel the primer going in and also to get an idea whether it's seated directly. So I tend to like this because it's really easy to do. Okay. So I've just done 10. You can see how quickly that took. I'm going to go do the rest and I'll meet you back here in a bit. Okay, folks, here we are for the next phase in the reloading process. As you can see, I've got all my uh, empty cases here that are all charged with pretty little primers. And this one here uh, holds 50, and that's usually how many I know at a time. Then I've got my reloading press, which you guys saw in the last video, except for this time it has a bullet seating die on it. Uh, and I'm going to use this in order to seat the bullets. Uh, then I have my calipers. Uh, I've got the actual bullets I'm going to use, which in this case are 175 grain CR match kings. Then I've got my scale, and I've got my powder trickler, and you can see it's full powder right here. And, uh, and then I have my funnel. Okay, so these are the tools that I'm going to use in order to reload these bullets. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move my powder trickler out of the way, I'm going to calibrate my scale. And, and that's, that's because, because you want, want super excruciatingly accurate measurements for this powder. powder. Now, I already know that I need 44 grains of powder in my, in my, in my um, cartridges. Uh, they can be very different in yours. I know that's what works for me. I've done extensive testing. And 44 grains of powder does not equal 44 grains of any powder. In this case, it's Hodgkin Fargan. So, so I've gone, gone through extensive testing to figure that out. out. Um, the ways the to do that are online. I don't think we need to get into that, but this is just showing you how to reload these. So anyways, so I'm just going to calibrate my scale. scale. Press so zero. zero. Now it wants the 20. 20. Press, Press it again. again. Now 
not want the, the other 30 added. added. Press it again. again. It's going to think, think about, about it for a second. second. And, and it's, it's going to go to 50. 50. When it when hits 50, 50, I take these off. off. I stick the tray back on, on and, and I hit zero. zero. Now we are good to go. We are good to start this spin from powder into this. And I'm going to do that very next step. Okay, so this step I'm going to dispense powder. Okay, now you already said I need 44 grains of hydrogen bargain to go into the scale. And what I do to use the fine measurements is use what's called powder trick work. Now what you can see here is it's pretty easy to see how this thing works. Until the course I can show, show, you. show you. As, As I, I turn, turn this knob, knob right here, here the, the, the powder the starts to trickle, trickle out. Now you can now see if I was going to do it like this, this it goes by a tenth. It would take an awful, awful long time, time for me to dispense 44 grains. So what I do is I use a scoop like this. Okay, this is a calibrated scoop. And I simply just take my powder, open up the lid, scoop some out. All right, uh, and I take it to a word it's about, about full, full, and I pour, and I pour it, in it in here. here. And you can you see, see. Okay, I'm at 39 and a half grains. grains. Now, now I can either, either go dispense, dispense more powder through the trickler, trickler, or I can take, take a little half, half scoop of this stuff here, here. And, stick and stick it in there. In there. Okay, so what happens now? I've got too much. Well, you've got to basically dump it out now. I'm just showing you this for a... Yeah, I've, perfected I've perfected this process in one way or rarely if ever go over. over. But let's say I'm here at 40.9 and I need to hit 44. Well, well, I just spin my trusty powder packler until, until I keep going up, going up and I hit 44. Alright, so 44.2 so and again, again I went over, over. So, so I dump it back, back into the trickler. I stick it back here. Under. under, go slow for this time. time. 44. Now, the reason now, the why I'm showing you this, this and I'm saying I'm trying, I'm trying not to make, to make this tedious, tedious is that I want you to see how much precision goes, goes into measuring, measuring this, this powder. powder. And, and what I am trying, trying to educate and communicate, communicate to you is that if you do it in this method, what you're going to do is get these super precise rounds. Okay, you're going to get ultra precise rounds because factory ammo is not usually loaded to this level of precision. Okay, okay, so what so do we do, what now? do we do now? Well, let me well, just read this in the camera, camera and I'll show you. Show you. Set, it Set it over here, here a little bit. bit. Okay. okay. Now what, now I, what do I do is I need to take, take this 44 grains, grains and I'm just going to stick it in the first, in the first empty, empty case. case. Okay. okay. So that so powder, powder just went into this empty case and now I have an empty case with powder in it. Now what I do not do is load all the cases with powder, powder and then see bullets. And the reason why I don't do that is because, because if you knock this case or shuffle it or some powder comes out, out, you have to remeasure all of those over, over again. again. Remember, when you're reloading rifle right right rounds, precision, precision is, the is the key. It's not it's only for good shooting, it's for safety. If I put a double charge into one of these, it could blow up in my face. All right, so you have to be really careful. So the next thing you do, then I'll reposition the camera again, excuse my movement. Is, is take this take case, this case take, one take one of your bullets. Of your bullets. Okay, and here's, and the bullet. here's the bullet. Here's the case. Here's the case. Put the case, Put the case inside, inside the the, the, the um, um, seating die. die. Stick the Stick bullet the in there like that. like that. Seat the, bullet. the bullet. Okay. Okay. Now what you, now have, what you is have, have is a completed rifle round. Right there is still one more step. step. I go, I go and I measure, and I measure to, see to see if I am, am 2.8 inches, inches cartridge overall, overall length. length. Now, now I happen to know that that's the number, that's the number and I've adjusted and this correctly, correctly and sure and enough, enough I'm at 2.8 inches, inches right, inches on, the right nose, on the nose cartridge overall length. length. So I've just, so I've created, just created this beautiful, beautiful and, and precise, precise 308 bullet, bullet uh, cartridge. Uh, cartridge. This is uh, 308 with a little brass. Uh, federal gold, gold metal match primer, primer and, and a, a beautiful 
175 grade Sierra Max bullet, this thing is ready to go. So that's what it takes to reload ammo step by step. I'm going to show you one more cartridge so that you can get a feel for the way this process works in real time. Okay? So I've created my one cartridge, I put them in these little plastic holders, repeat the process all over again. Alright? Alright. Scale seems, seems to have, have choked, choked in, the in the meantime, so what I'm going to so do is I'm going to calibrate it again. It can never be too safe. Again, the amount of power, the power that you put, that you put in, in there is um, um, very important. important. So if this thing ever drifts off or anything like that, like that, you definitely, you definitely want to correct that. that. Okay? Okay. This takes a second. A second. When I'm reloading, when I'm reloading typically, typically, this doesn't, this doesn't usually happen, happen, but of course, of course I'm filming it, so here we go. Alright, so it's All back right, so down this here, so here we go so in, real go in real time. This is exactly, this is exactly how, how I reload this thing. This thing. Okay. okay. Scoop of powder. Scoop the powder. Put the powder, Put the powder in, in there. In there. 39, 39 grains. grains. Work it up Work with my up hand. With my hand.
way it looks because I'm trying to send it to develop for accurate uh, uh, load. So load. these so do the these trick. Do the so these trick. are federal, federal uh, gold metal max primers. 100 of them, and you see I've got the full pack, pack uh, which used to be uh, available be before the ammo crunch, and I think it's now starting to become available again. Again. So again. So if you're interested, if you're interested in accuracy, in accuracy for long-range long shooting, shooting, federal gold federal metal match, match, this stuff is this just unparalleled. unparalleled. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. okay, on the, on the small on rifle, something like 223, 223 and things of that nature, I'm using, using CCI, CCI small, rifle small rifle primers. primers. Okay, well, why okay, wouldn't why I be wouldn't using gold metal match, match in a smaller, in a smaller size? size? Well, well, my 223, 223 loads, loads, are loads are not really not designed, really for, designed maximum for maximum accuracy. accuracy. Uh, uh, they're uh, the loads that I would shoot the most of, and so they just need a decent primer, and CCI makes great primers, so that's what I'm using for my small rifle stuff. 223, 223 CCI, small rifle primers, number 400. Okay. Okay. Now we can now we get into the bullet territory, and we have a similar kind of dichotomy once again. Once again, for 308, 308 um, when uh, accuracy uh, is important, I'm important. using 175, 175 grain, zero match, match game, game hull, point, hotel. hotel. Um, um, so that's what so these are. What these are. You can see what you I can paid see for them uh, uh, recently at a store for 42, 42 bucks. That was a little that high. Little I just bought them because, because there were too many of them too many available, available at the time. At the time. But, but basically, basically what you're getting is 308 diameter, 175 grain, hull point, hotel match. Sierra Match King is really the only type of bullet I would consider for high-end shooting. There are many other brands that are just as good, but this is the one I have personal experience with. Now, when we now, switch when back we switch to, back to the, um, the um, 223, of course, I'm back, back to more garden variety stuff. Garden variety these, stuff. Are, uh, these are nozzle uh, or nozzle 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 competition, competition uh, bullets. Uh, bullets, and I am shooting a 1 in 7 twist, twist AR and right and now, so, so what I'm what using, using is a 77 grain. grain. Uh, 224 uh, hull point boat tail, tail uh, bullet. Uh, for a little for more a little accuracy, more. this is not this is plinking not stuff. stuff. This, this, is, this is, will make this for will a fairly, fairly accurate, accurate round. round. Um, um, but, again, but again, you know how accurate it is a 223 projectile you're shooting inside, inside of 100 to 100 yards. 200 yards. I know what people will tell you, 500 to 600 yards, but realistically, you're not going to shoot it that far. So that's what I use. Nozzler custom competition for my AR reloading. reloading. Uh, and finally, we, switch, finally over we switch over to brass. Now, my 308 my brass, brass is going to be Lapua. Uh, for uh, anyone that doesn't know, what's the right that name down, that go ahead and copy that down. This is some of the best brass that money can buy. It comes from Finland. From Finland. Um, um, you can see two can rounds see two or two uh, cases right, right here. These have both been fired, been fired several times. I'm not times. sure how many. I think three or four. And they're fantastic. They still have got plenty of life in them. Um, I buy Lapua brass because it's super heavy. It's nice thick brass that I can reload more than once. It's super high quality, quality uh, brass. The, um, the, um, the Lapua is made in Finland. Uh, uh, it's uh, made in Finland. Uh, 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 it's made in Finland. Uh, 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 the the flash hole uh, is machined instead of stamped. Stamp. So, it, so it, what you get is a really nice round flash hole. Then it's been cut with the drill bit rather than a stamp. So this is high quality brass and you pay for it. Um, 100 rounds or 100 cases like this, I think, were in the $75 range. But you know what? I've reloaded these cases. I can't tell you how many times I was six or seven. And they probably got seven or eight. And I've never had a case that explodes or anything like that. Okay. And again, these are for my 308, so where I demand precision, you'll notice that I've got really high end components in anything that I have that requires precision. Now, when it comes to 223 brass, I will use Milser. That's what this is. This is surplus brass, once fired brass. This is Lake City brass that I just bought online. You can see that it's once fired brass. I will reload this stuff. Um, the problem with the problem Milser with brass, Milser and you can't really and see it, is that the primer is crimped in there, so that you need to use a reamer, use a reamer uh, or a press or to, uh, to uh, level that primer level that so that you can put so you more, can put more uh, additional uh, primers in there. But for 223 brass, I was okay with it. Reloads. Um, these do take some work to recondition. 
I just bought these I because bought the price was right on them. I think I bought a thousand rounds for $130, so it was, you know, a lot of cases, thousand cases. Um, um, but you don't, you need, to you don't need to go look for stuff, stuff that's really stuff garden that's variety of these. Variety I don't mind, I don't mind if I lose a couple. Lose a couple. Keep in mind that they might be done in my bolt gun. I will eject these, and I will know exactly where this round will go when it's ejected. it's ejected. My gas gun, my, my gas ARs, my ARs eject these eject by themselves, by themselves. So, that they, you know, so that they fly off, bang, 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 bang as you're shooting, and I don't really and care if I lose one of these, and that's kind of my rationale right there. Rationale right there. So that's so the right that's components, the components I use. I if you have any questions, by all means, write me. I'm Frank Mitchell, and I'll catch you next week.